Okay, guys, it's that time of year. So you know what that means. It's time to rank every movie I watched for a reaction on this channel this year. Let's do it. Hi. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you've never been here before kind of an interesting video to start watching on my channel But I'm happy to have you nonetheless. So if you don't know I am a movie commentator reactor and 2022 I almost said 2023. It's not 2023 quite yet, but 2022 has been a very good year for first time watching, you know, in that little realm and that little scheme of things. It has been a really good year. I've watched some amazing movies this year and some absolutely terrible, horrific movies, but we'll get into that later. So last year I did a ranking, but I did it a little differently. I did it in a numbered style. This year we're gonna do a tier ranking because I don't want to have to choose one movie. And it was really ballsy of me to do that last year because my opinion has changed about a lot of those movies. So little disclaimer, if you have seen my reaction to these movies on my channel and and I put them in a different category than you're thinking or than I originally stated in my first initial reaction. Uh, don't be surprised because a couple of things. One, I am going to be straightforward with you guys. It's going to be honest. I am very indecisive. <laughs> That's just the facts. And two, I think naturally opinions just change over time. You know, they're still helping it. And I actually appreciate when opinions change. It just shows that you are growing as a person. And we love to see that. My opinion has changed on a lot of these movies some for the better and some for the worse so we will get into that right now but before we do i want to just give a quick little self plug for my patreon i am so grateful for all of my patrons this year i started it in march you guys are just so nice to me <laughs> i really appreciate it so if you want to give some extra support you can even join for one dollar a month that will help me tremendously and you can get videos earlier than when i post them here on youtube YouTube and access to the discord and eligibility to vote on polls to help me decide what my next movie I react to is gonna be. So if any of that interests you, link for my Patreon will be in the description below. Okay, so enough chit chatting. I think we ought to just go ahead and get into it because this is gonna be a long one, just so you know. Okay, so I have counted and I have watched 42 movies this year, or at least 42 movies for the channel, commentary, reaction, whatever. We got a lot to work with here. Let's go ahead and just give you a quick rundown of my categories. Top tier is I have no critiques, no critiques. This movie is perfection for me. I wouldn't change a thing. Loved it from the moment I watched it. It is everything that you could want in a movie and more. Yes, yes, yes. All right, that is a top tier, badass, best movie ever. Under that, we have almost a new favorite. It was so close to being top tier and it also basically means that my opinion about it will probably change and it probably will be a top tier. But for right now, I don't want to give it that top tier perfection stamp of approval, but it is a good ass movie. Now, right smack down in the middle, we have Lost Masterpiece. Now this one, I feel like it's just very self-explanatory. It has so much potential. It's a good movie. I would rewatch it. However, it's not my the best thing in the world and it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So it's just really smack down in the middle. Like it is a neutral opinion about a movie. So I want to also clarify, this is just going to be movies that I reacted to for a uh, commentary. It's not going to be, you know, ones I did reviews about or newer releases. It's just what I watched for a reaction commentary. Okay, under that we have bad. Simple as that. There's nothing more really to say. It was just a bad movie. Movies in this category, it's just movies that aren't for me. You know what I mean? It's nothing particularly terrible about them. Although I might have a couple opinions about it, but 
that's all they are they're just opinions it's just not my taste it's just not made for me it's just something i just did not enjoy and no harm no foul all right like i said just an opinion and then lastly we have terrifier i don't think i need to say more terrifier bottom tier let's go all right, so the first movie that I watched this year was the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I watched this because I had only seen the ending of it and I wanted, you know, the full effect and also the Netflix sequel to this original Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in January, which don't worry, we will get into that because I did a commentary on that. So we got opinions. Let me just say this too. I also write down you know every I also write down every commentary rating that I gave the movie initially so that I can go back and actually see what I did so for Texas Chainsaw the 1974 one I gave it a 7 out of 10 I don't know what I would get what category I put this in it wasn't terrible it just freaked me out which many may argue is a good thing you know you probably want a horror movie to freak you out and especially one like this it really did you know give me the heebie-jeebies uh, I'll put this in almost a new fave because it wasn't like a lost masterpiece you know they did everything that they did with that movie and you know there's a lot of remakes and then there's the 2022 one so it's not a lost potential type of thing it's spooky and that's what it did it gave the you know gave the heebie-jeebies it did what it came here to do point blank period okay so i was not initially going to include this because it's not a movie it is a tv show that i did and that is the chucky tv show so i reacted to the chucky tv show this year too this was in january early january that i did this but i am going to you know add it to this as well so technically 43 is what we're going to say um this is a top tier i mean i love pretty much anything that chucky does let's be completely honest i mean how could you not i am left with more questions and if you are wondering yes i am going to be doing the season two just wait i'm telling you you don't have to wait very much longer like it's happening sooner than you think all right, it's 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 coming out. But yeah, I have no critiques. I love Chucky. This series was amazing. It was like, I mean, goofed. It spooked me. It was nothing that I was expecting. It was very high quality, well done. No critiques. That was an amazing series. That was a 10 out of 10. I think I rated it initially a 9 out of 10, but let's be honest. Not so 10 out of 10. All right, the next movie that I watched was Orphan. All right, the 2009 original Orphan movie. I'll be honest, I did this too because I thought supposedly it was the Orphan first kill was supposed to come out in January, but it actually came out way freaking later. I don't even know how much later. I think it came out in like August or something or July. I don't know, it came out way later. This original Orphan movie was fantastic. I thought that it was so spooky, you know, the actress for this is amazing, so good in this, so creepy, and I'm telling you, that twist, the reason why she's doing all this, I was, oh my god, I was like, girl, what are we doing? doing and the twist of her actually being oh my gosh i was i don't want to give away too much if you haven't seen it but it's just that was that was a crazy movie i initially rated it a 7 out of 10 but i think looking back on it now that's a top tier that is a good movie i don't have any critiques it's kind of hilarious that she did this all for it well i said i don't want to spoil it but let's just say a zaddy all for a zaddy question mark if you know you know Oh my gosh, this next one. You know, it's so crazy thinking back how long a year is. I totally forgot that I saw this this year, but we also saw Killer Clowns from Outer Space for the very first time, folks. I think we all know where this is going. I'm, I'm just gonna put it there because we all know where it's going. I have no critiques. I initially rated this movie an eight out of 10. Now, obviously that movie is a 10 out of 10 considering I feel like it's so engrossed in my life now <laughs> because I got the Killer Clowns cotton candy gun. I went to Horror Nights and got the shirt and 
is just such a niche and campy cult classic and you just you gotta love it it is so funny it is just everything you would want in a movie and more the exact definition of this tier we got the killer clowns video game coming out in 2023 you already know i'm gonna play that i'm gonna try to be a little gamer girl streamer bitch and try to figure out how to do that because i'm not the most tech savvy person but Yes, Killer Clowns, top tier, love, love, love. And I think most of you would agree. Mm, okay, interesting. So next we have My Bloody Valentine. This one, I initially gave this an eight out of 10. I really liked this movie when I first watched it and I'm talking about the original 1981 version. This one was really good. I understand that I did not watch, I, I think I watched like the rated one. I did not watch the unrated. Some people have been commenting, but I gotta say, I really liked this movie. It was very eerie, a lot more eerie than I thought it was going to be. But main separation from the top tier and the one under it is that, you know, it, it, they just have to be funny. Have a little bit of humor in there and we're good to go. Like that's a top tier. This one didn't have humor. It was just eerie all the way out. I mean, there was some humor, but let's be honest, it wasn't like the greatest thing in the world. However, I'm putting this in almost a new fave. It was very close to being a new favorite for me, but for right now, it's not top tier potential. It's not top tier just quite, but it is an amazing movie. I would rewatch it. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I said that we would come back to Texas Chainsaw and here we are, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the Netflix one, it's supposed to be a direct sequel to the very first one. So I watched it how it is intended, all right? I watched the first one and this one, this is a sequel directly. I haven't watched anything in between now that I have I don't know what they were doing with this one. So I think, I did not rate this very high, let's be honest, I don't remember what I said in my video. I think I'm just gonna put it in bad. Simple as that. They, they just, it was just so odd. Like there was a certain scenes and themes and motifs. I was like, what are we doing folks? Why are we doing this? It was just a bad movie. The only reason why it's not absolutely bottom tier material, it was kind of shocking at certain points and it actually did kind of spook me. I was actually invested, I guess I would say, invested as much as I can be. Like I didn't care too much about the people. The plot for this one was so odd. I don't know what they were thinking. It just does not make sense. The characters were just weird and the ending and bringing back Sally and then killing her off. I'm just, oh my gosh. It was a mess y'all. It was a mess, but it wasn't the worst thing we've ever seen as we all know, but we'll get to, we'll get to that. Don't worry folks. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Next we watch A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Okay. So I initially rated this a six out of 10. I don't really think that's a bad rating. I'll be completely honest because I rate these out of 10. Six out of 10 is like barely passing for me. It was just Ah, like who is this random guy? And why is he getting haunted? The whole thing, their parents, all the kids' parents were connected to Freddy. This guy was just living in the house. Like why, why, tell me why? I don't know, I really don't know. This one was odd. <laughs> I, I think I said this in my commentary or it's like in the description, but I was like, y'all, Wes Craven knew not to come back for this one. <sighs> Where do I put this one? I wouldn't say it was bad. It was still funny and it still provided something for me, you know, emotionally, physically, spiritually. We're just gonna put this in a lost masterpiece. I think that's a good rating because it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't bad, but you know, it definitely wasn't the best thing in the entire world. <laughs> We're being completely honest here. Oof. All right, y'all. Next, we have The Sixth Sense. I cannot believe I had not watched this movie and that it took me so long. This movie is a classic and I've seen some M. Night Shyamalan movies, but I've never seen this one. I don't know how. I was not expecting the twist when it happened, which is not something a lot of people can say. If you guys don't know, I did this reaction with Thor Reacts. Go check out his channel. He does amazing stuff. If you're a Buffy fan, he is also a Buffy, the vampire slayer. But 
Yeah, so I highly encourage you to check him out. Such a nice person. But yeah, this movie was so fantastic. It's going in, I have no critiques. Because I really don't. I feel like when this movie came out, it was so different than normal movies that you would see. And of course, M. Night Shyamalan, we all know he has twists and certain aspects and things in his movies and we can predict them now, but back then we could not. So it was really something that hit you when you first saw it because you didn't know what to expect. Such a good, oh, the acting was so good. Bruce Willis. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I love that movie. And I think I initially gave it a nine out of 10, but looking back, 10 out of 10 for sure. Okay, y'all. I gotta take a drink of water for this one. This is where the chaos begins because next we have Friday the 13th part two. Potato sack head Jason. Looking back, okay, okay. I initially gave this a six or a seven out of 10. I said somewhere in between right now. I mean, okay, I need, I feel like I need to explain myself. I love the Friday the 13th movies, all right? I love that they are just campy, summer, lake, goofy, teenagers being stupid, cheesy, horror, bleh, movies. I mean, people might disagree with this, but I'm not saying this as a bad thing. It is the epitome of no plot, just vibes. Because it is, it's such a vibey franchise. You got the summer aesthetic, the lake, the canoeing, the archery, whatever. I'm telling you, I am a fan of interesting kills and Friday the 13th has them. All right, so these are all compliments. So for this one, I'm gonna put this in almost a new fave because I still think the first one was really good, but this one is definitely the second one in my ranking of the movies because I've seen up to four at this point in time. It's definitely the second best in my opinion. But don't get me wrong, these are all compliments. I love Jason, I love Friday the 13th. It was just, the ending was just odd. I don't know what they're thinking, who came up with that ending, but they did it, so we gotta live with it. Ooh, okay, we got a good one next, folks. We have Mother Freaking Hellraiser, y'all. Oh my gosh. First and foremost, this movie. I mean, the twists and turns and the ooey gooeyness, I feel like this is where it started with the ooey gooey love. If you don't know, I love movies that are just ooey gooey and have weird, obscure, you know, special effects like that. This movie, first of all, the epitome of ooey gooey. So we love to see it. And second of all, the concept, Clive Barker's mind. You know what I mean? This is the most unique concept a movie director, writer, or whatever can have. Because I believe there is a book or something that this might be based off of. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Probably not. But there are books or something of the sort. But that's not what we're talking about here. This is such an interesting idea. I love when people are just having original ideas. Because apparently that is something very difficult to have here in Hollywood. Wes Craven was able to do it with scream they were able to do it with chucky you know what i mean so it is possible i feel like 80s is just the prime time but we already know that this is going into i have no critiques because i truly do not and i initially gave this a 9 out of 10 usually when i give something a 9 out of 10 it's because i want to think about it a little bit more okay is this really worth a 10 out of 10 this one is if this one is i feel like most people will agree i've not seen any of the other Hellraisers. I did see the one that came out this year, 2022 on Hulu. Go watch my review about that one because that was so neutral. I had such a neutral opinion about that one. It was so mid, which isn't a bad thing, but it definitely ain't good either. <laughs> All right, next we watched The Fly. Oh my gosh, David Cronenberg's The Fly. This movie, I also was not expecting to like this movie as much as I did. Holy crapola. This movie was so good. If you don't watch my reaction to it, please do. I was crying. I was feeling so many different things. This is of course, of course, of course, going in. I have no critiques. It was just, it was so, it was so much more beautiful and deep and heartbreaking and tragic than I thought it was gonna be. I was way more attached to these characters than I thought. So when the ending came, oh my gosh, I, I lost it. I really did, y'all. <laughs> I 
don't know what is going what was going through my head i initially gave the fly an 8 out of 10 obviously in the back of it now that's a top tier movie in my opinion so weird but actually really well executed love of love also no i'm not going to be watching david cronenberg's newest 2022 release what is it crimes from the future i'm not watching it i've seen too many reviews and commentaries about it i'm not watching it just so you know just so you know. Okay, we got an interesting one next up here, folks. We have John Carpenter's The Thing. I'm telling you, looking back and seeing that I actually watched all these in one year, it's like, wow, that like that is crazy in my mind. Okay, so The Thing. I initially gave it an eight out of 10, right? This is the 1982 The Thing. This one was also ooey gooey and I, f I liked it, I do have to say it did feel a little long to me and that's not a bad thing if your movie is long i need to like say this that is not a bad thing however it's just not something that i look for but you know do your thing john carpenter listen the thing was a good movie i enjoyed it it was so close but just wasn't quite there in my opinion in my humble humble opinion and this is my opinion i know a lot of people like this movie the thing and i understand that i don't know when it came out 2010 or something 2010 2000 whatever the thing is supposed to be a prequel i think i don't know but we love the special effects special effects actually doing it instead of cgi that's the way to go and that's why i love these older movies Okay, uh, when I tell you that 2022 feels so long ago and it's not even over yet, I really mean it because next we have Fresh and I completely forgot that this movie even came out this year, but this was a Hulu movie and it was actually very, very good. Looking back, I don't even know if I have critiques of it, but I don't feel right putting it in the top tier. This movie was so odd. Love the acting though. And I, I think maybe it was the ending or how things went about and unanswered questions that if if this was supposed to be just a standalone there's a lot of things that confused me that they shouldn't if this was supposed to be just a standalone you know what i mean so i'm gonna put it in almost a new faith because like i said it was really good i definitely would re-watch it but you know it's just it just left me with too many questions and not in a good way you know kind of like the thing the thing left me with a lot of questions in a good way though because it is an eerie obscure setting this one is just it could actually happen like this is real life this guy is actually a cannibal you know what the frick so i feel like there shouldn't be a lot of unanswered you know things going on all right next we have the blob Ooh, sheesh oh and i think i forgot to say this for fresh i originally gave it an 8 out of 10 for the blob this 1988 one i also gave it an 8 out of 10 looking back I don't think I have any critiques. This was, uh, first and foremost, I have to say it, Shawnee Smith. When people pointed out to me, I was like, why does she look so familiar? People were like, that is Amanda from Saw. Oh my gosh. I was like, this girl's a legend, an icon. Yes, yes, yes. So this is an I have no critiques because it is just one of those obscure things. You guys know I love these like random ass blob clown, like, you know what I mean? Random movies that are just about things that probably couldn't happen. But I'm not saying that they couldn't. Same thing with like the fly, Hellraiser, what? Could these things actually happen? I don't know. But I like the idea of these movies, of, you know, it being a movie. So the blob was just so weird. It was just like a giant ugh, ooey gooey. We'd love to see it. You already know, if it's ooey gooey, it's at least going in almost a new fave or I have no critiques. Oh my gosh, y'all, this next one. When I say this one spooked me in a way that I didn't think it was going to, it spooked me. It really freaking did. Next, we have The Others with Nicole Kidman. I originally gave this a seven out of 10. This came out in 2001. And in my reaction, I mentioned that I had seen it, but I literally do not remember anything about it. I just remember it freaking me out when I was younger and it really did. It's one of those great movies that if you don't know the twist already, you're gonna be gooped and gagged because I was. I did not know the twist and then 
looking at all the comments and trying to figure out all the connecting all the dots and everything. I love when movies do that. I don't really have critiques of it, but I'm gonna put it in almost a new fave. I'm rating these all very high. I feel like I've been rating all like the, the past ones all very high. We'll get to the bad ones, surely enough. I'm telling you, I've watched a lot of really good movies, but the others almost a new fave because there was one scene that particularly spooked me. Go watch my reaction. That it really freaking freaked me out. Yeah, it's just it's not a top tier for me. I don't even know if I would rewatch it to be completely honest. Honest. I don't think it's a lost masterpiece, but maybe if there was like more gore or something, I would think that, but I kind of like that it's not very gory. I don't even think it's gory at all, actually, but it was spooky, scary skeleton. Oh my gosh. Okay, so next we continued with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise and we watch A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. That name. Oh my god. I feel already in my heart and soul that I want to put this in Lost Masterpiece because I just do not like the idea of... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just staring at the image of Freddy staring to my soul. I just don't like the idea of... Spoiler alert if you've never seen it. I'm gonna spoil it. Five, four, three, two, one of them killing Nancy, of Nancy getting killed, she sacrificed herself, whatever you want to call it. I don't like it. I love Nancy. If she could stay alive for the rest of the franchise, that would have been super hot and sexy, but that didn't happen. So lost masterpiece. But I also said this in my original, I feel like this should have been the second movie because it had Nancy and it basically directly correlated right after the first one. The second movie, non-existent in my head. Like it should not have happened at all. And the Dream Warriors one should have been the second one. But that's my humble opinion. I originally gave this an eight out of 10, which is very, very high. But like we all said, opinions change. Okay, another one that I was very surprised about was Mother. All right, this is um, Darren Aronofsky's movie, Jennifer Lawrence. Oh my gosh, I was very surprised about this one. I know a lot of people don't like this one or think that it's really freaking odd. I feel like, and I feel like this is a very rare, I'm not trying to hype myself up, but I feel like this is like not a very common opinion, but I feel like I understood the themes and the messages first time watching it. I was like, okay, I understand the religious motifs and aspects. I understand, you know, this mother earth type of setting and her husband is God. And I understand these things, the Cain and Abel, whatever. Like I understood it, but I have a very different life experience and other people. I grew up in a religious household. So my entire life was centered around religious stories and biblical tellings and whatnot. So I feel like I could get themes of religious stories and biblical things right off the bat, wherever they're at in society, I will understand the analogy because I grew up the way that I did. So anyways, <laughs> this is a top tier movie for me. I initially gave this a nine out of 10. And I remember thinking, okay I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10 only because I want to do more research on what you know the intentions are for this movie or the themes or whatever like I wanted to do more research about it and once I did I was like okay like a lot of thought went into this 10 out of 10. I do want to acknowledge though I do know that Jennifer Lawrence was traumatized after filming this movie because she had to do like so many crazy scenes and the act like oh my gosh go watch that movie with caution though. <laughs> Just watch my reaction actually. There we go. Self plug. Okay, next we have Prom Night with Jamie Lee Curtis. This is the 1981 and I gave it an 8 out of 10. Okay, this one, it kind of falls into the same category of My Bloody Valentine, where it's kind of, this leans heavily on the eeriness. But I gotta say, I thought this was going a completely different way. And I had a different idea of what could happen, but it didn't. And... For that, I'm gonna say Lost Masterpiece. I really like this and don't get me wrong, we love that dancing queen, <laughs> that whole dance sequence. I mean, that was a freaking, that was a long part of the movie too. I was like, really, we're doing this? And Jamie Lee Curtis, we love her. However, I feel like, which I'm gonna spoil it. I wanna spoil it by four, 
31. It being the brother, I thought that one, it would have been cool if it was, you know, the girl didn't actually die or something and it was her, or if it was Jamie Lee Curtis because they have her on the poster with the ax. I thought that it was gonna be her, like that would have been cool, but no, that's that wasn't the case. I just feel like they, they could have gone so many different routes with it just being the brother. Okay, like it happened. Let's acknowledge it. Uh, all right, it's just average to me. Okay, guys, we got a big one here. I can't believe I watched this for the first time this year. Next, we have Alien. All right, the original Alien, the 1979 one. I originally gave this an eight out of 10. Let me say a couple things before I, I put this where I wanna put this. I understand why so many people like this. It is a very good classic Alien movie. It's sci-fi, you know, fantasy, whatever you wanna call it. It is a space horror movie. Yes, that's fantastic. We love to see it. Let me say this. In my humble opinion, I just don't think I am a space girly. I gave it an eight, an eight out of 10 because it was very well executed. The acting and everything in it was fantastic. I would literally die for Sigourney Weaver. However, I just don't think space movies are for me. It is a little boring. It, it, it can get a little boring because there's so many things that they gotta cover, but it's just, it's just not my the best thing in my opinion. I, I don't, it's not a lost masterpiece and it's not bad. So I'm gonna put it in almost a new favorite because I just felt like it was pretty long and that's all just on me because it's just not my thing. And I appreciate it for what it is, what it do, but that it's just space stuff is not for me. And that's just my opinion. I mean, take it with a grain of salt. I freaking gave killer clowns from outer space and a 10 out of 10. <laughs> All right, I'm aware. I'm self-aware. Ooh, we got an interesting one. Next up, we have, I know what you did last summer. The, when did this come out? 1997, wow. I gave this a nine out of 10. That's freaking high, y'all. I love these teen slasher movies. And it has so many iconic actors. Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Freddie Prince, and the guy from Cruel Intentions. I can't name his name off, off the top of my head. Iconic cast. I really wanna watch the second one with Brandy. I was hoping she was gonna be in this one, but she's not. This one was just, oh my God. It was messy, 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 messy. I was like, they are in so, so much deep shit right now. But with that said and done, I really enjoyed my time. I have no critiques because that ending, that twist, I was not expecting it. And I was like, all right, fair enough. Cause I did not think that was gonna happen, but it did. Okay, this next one. I don't really think I need to say much. We have, Jaws. I cannot believe I watched Jaws for the first time this year. Amazing spectacular. I think I originally gave this a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I originally gave this 10 out of 10. Jaws. I don't really think I need to, I need to say more. This was a fantastic movie and I was so much more attached than I thought I was going to be. Right there. There you go. Jaws. Okay, next we have Halloween 2. This one was, it was just there. You know what I mean? It just, it just happened in the timeline. But this one also revealed that they are related, but in later ones, which we'll get into, because I also watched 2018's Halloween, says that they're not related. So this one's kind of like, why? You know what I mean? Why did this happen? I did like the hospital setting. Horace is majorly Boobs McGee. I'm not the biggest fan of the older Halloween movies because of how much Boobs McGee there are for like no reason at all. And if you're gonna comment saying that there is a reason, please get some help. Yeah, I mean, it was just their lost masterpiece. I feel like it could have been really cool, but they were just like, oh, the first one was really good. Let's make another one. That's what it felt like. So I don't know if there are many people that are the biggest fan of Halloween 2. I heard Halloween 3, I believe, doesn't even have Michael Myers in it. So I don't know what's up with that, but we'll get into more Halloween stuff later. Oh my gosh, next we have Friday the 13th part three. This one I really want to put and I have no critiques just for shits and giggles, but I'm not going to. This one was in 3D y'all. And I think that that is very important information to have 
because why isn't every movie in 3D? Like, hello, best thing ever. But I am self-aware. So I'm gonna put it in almost a new fave, even though I really wanna put it in I Have No Critiques. I need to be realistic with myself though. It's not the best movie ever, which is what this top tier is reserved for, but I just loved how goofy it was with them trying to add all these 3D aspects of like, let me do this, whoa, whoa. And you're not watching it in 3D. It just looks so goofy. Oh my gosh, it's my favorite though. It's high up on my ranking for the franchise. So when I watch more movies, just wait, that's gonna be high up there solely for the fact that is in 3D and we love to see it. All right, next we have John Carpenter's The Fog. I believe it's John Carpenter. I originally gave this a seven out of 10. This is the 1981 with Jamie Lee Curtis. This one was also just it was just there, you know what I mean? It, it just it just happened. I mean, it was actually very spooky, way more spooky than I thought it was gonna be, but I'm gonna put this in Lost Masterpiece because it wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but it was a movie with Jamie Lee Curtis and I did enjoy it. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. I just don't really have that much an opinion about it. As for this whole middle tier, I basically just don't have very strong opinions about these movies. Other than the third one of A Nightmare on Elm Street, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, y'all already know my opinions. With that, okay, this one y'all. Oh my gosh, okay, this one, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Now, this is the 19, 78 remake. I do understand that there's a 50s or 60s one. I gave this a 7 out of 10. I will say this, this one, I really enjoyed it. I was hyping it up because the concept was so cool, but I felt like this dragged. I don't know, maybe that's just me. I felt like this dragged so much. They weren't even trying to problem solve. I thought that it was just gonna be, okay, there's this virus or there's this thing taking over everybody, whatever. We gotta figure out how to, you know, how to stop it. They're all scientists, are they not? And they never figure out how to stop it. They just live in the world and then ding. And I was like, okay, well, that's, that's just that. I'm gonna put this in Lost Masterpiece because I wanna put in almost a new fave, but realistically, I just did not like that they were all scientists and no one could try to like they never spent time trying to figure out how to stop it they were just running away from it the entire time and so that's why it felt like it dragged because there was no there's we weren't we weren't working towards something you know what I mean oh gosh you guys I don't think I have the energy for this next one that time has finally come and I don't really want to talk about this I'm gonna just gonna briefly acknowledge it and then we're gonna move on next we have terrifier I originally gave this a two out of 10. And looking back on it, that was very generous. I'm sorry if you like this movie. I know people that like this movie, but I think if you like this movie, you also understand that it's not for everybody. So you can't hate me for thinking that this movie is garbage. <laughs> the movie is so bad and terrible. And also I would like to say, if you watched my reaction to it, I, I really thank you. At least I got something out of it, you know? Hope you enjoyed that. Stop asking me to react to the second one. All right, I don't want to, I know my be funny for shits and giggles but also the second one that came out this year freaking two and a half hours long for what reason there is no reason i refuse i'm not going to watch it and that's the last time i'm going to acknowledge it thank you very much okay next we have something that actually like redeemed my hope but also didn't at the same time so i got a couple things to say about this next we got fight club all right this movie was fantastic 1999 i gave this i gave this a 10 out of 10 when i first watched it i am going to put it in i have no critiques i thought that, that it was amazing spectacular i thought that it was going to be like a very dude bro movie and trust me it was but it was that for a reason because y'all know i hate when things happen for no reason at all in movies but for this one it actually did so i'm grateful for that however i do know me being a girl watching fight club and it's 
kind of being portrayed as a majorly dude bro movie. I got a ton of hate comments on that video, even though I gave this movie a 10 out of 10. So I just like, I would like to acknowledge that. If you don't know what you want, don't take it out on me. <laughs> All right, like, fuck. Oh my gosh. Okay, this one was a freaking, I asked you guys like, you all, do you guys want me to watch, watch this movie and do a commentary? And you're like, yes. And why? So next we have They Slash Them, a Blumhouse movie that came out this year on Peacock. And I watched it because the concept seemed pretty cool or I was at least interested in what was gonna happen. You know, we got Kevin Bacon who was from Friday the 13th. I kind of thought that it was just going to be Friday the 13th, but the setting was that they're at a conversion camp and they're all girlies, gays, and days. So I was like, okay, we'd love to see it. But no, the whole thing was about them being girlies, gays, and days. And I was like, okay, so we really are gonna dig into this topic. And it was just, I gotta put it, it was just bad. Like it was just bad. It was just a bad movie. It did not need to happen the way that it did. Bad movie, simple as that, point blank period. And I endured that movie for you guys. So please go watch that because I need to get something out of that because watching the whole movie was just, it was, it was just, it was not it. All right. But on that note, next we have Saw from 2004. I gave this a 10 out of 10. I mean, I have seen the original Saw movie already. I was re-watching this so we can get hyped up and so I can watch all the Saw movies again. And there's gonna be a Saw 10 coming out in 2023. So I have no critiques. This is like one of the best, well actually in my opinion, the best Saw movie because one, it's not overly complicated. The twist is good. It's like the same thing with The Sixth Sense. It's the first of its kind. So you don't know what to expect, but now that there are more movies, you know, there's more M. Night Shyamalan movies, there's more Saw movies, and you do know what to expect, then it's kind of, repetitive and you you know it's not as good as that first taste that you get with the very first Saw movie. It says yes and it had me crying. I was actually crying. Uh, I was going through it. <laughs> Ooh, okay, this one, it was a very pleasant surprise. We got Orphan, First Kill. Part of me kind of likes this maybe a little bit more than the first Orphan because it was just so funny. I don't know, I'm gonna put it in I Have No Critiques. I originally gave this an eight out of 10, but I surely don't have any critiques because <laughs> It was just such a fun movie to watch, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people probably didn't like it, I understand it, but if I just wanna watch a random movie that's just funny, has you know, twists and turns, you don't know what to expect next, maybe even have you cringing a little bit because of how awkward some things are, yes, you will, you need to watch this one for sure. The Orphan movies, they're fantastic, y'all. <laughs> All for a zaddy, am I right, folks? Okay, next we have Aliens, the second Alien movie. I gave this a seven out of 10. I think I'm going to put this, I know this might be controversial, but this is all about my opinion. I'm gonna put this in Lost Masterpiece because I really did not understand why they had to bring in a girl, a little girl living in space and they never explained it, at least I don't think. In that, in that movie, maybe later on they might explain it and this movie, I feel like they did not explain it and we were supposed to live with it. I was like, hello, there's a literal child in space. Why is this a thing? I just did not understand it. It could have been really cool, but it just wasn't in my humble opinion, but we already know that space movies are not my thing. <laughs> okay, this is the first movie I watched after my break on YouTube. And why did it take me so long to watch this movie? The Blair Witch Project, all right? 1999, I believe. I gave this initially a 10 out of 10. I'm running out of space for the 10 out of 10s though. I'm just gonna like shove it somewhere. Anyways, yeah, this, I feel like, again, it's one of those movies that you watch for the first time and it just has you on edge. <laughs> this really had me on the edge of my seat because I remember hearing that maybe it's kind of real, but also not. And I don't know, I thought that it was real footage, real people, whatever. And so this movie actually freaked me the frick out. Thankfully though, it's not real. <laughs> it's not real and it is just a fictional movie, but 
the emotions that I went through watching this, oh my gosh, 10 out of 10 experience. I wish I could feel that again. Hopefully we'll get to be able to do that with some newer releases, but this movie, I mean, I, I have no critiques. I would not want a movie like this done any other type of way. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want a movie that is about searching for something like this, you know, searching for this Blair Witch. I wouldn't want it done any other way. Okay, falling into that found footage category. Next we have VHS. I originally gave this four out of 10. I am telling you, I feel like this had so much potential. Found footage, I realized was something that I really enjoyed, but this was just, in my opinion, is bad, all right? It's just, it was not made for me. I don't know who the target audience is, but it ain't me because I did not enjoy this at all. I just don't understand why found footage shit, scary stuff has to, one, include all this sexy and boob McGee's, and two, you guys know how I feel about it just being unnecessary. So that on top of it just being super gross as well. And it was just so odd. And I don't know, it just was not for me. This is going in bad, simple as that. I'm sorry if you enjoyed enjoy it and I again I'm watching all these movies because I'm like oh there's a new one coming out there's I think a new VHS uh 99 I believe or 94 or something that came out this year I was gonna watch that you know the series but after saying that I don't think so I'm sorry it's not happening okay y'all this might be a controversial opinion but next we have Halloween this is 2018 version this is the 2018 Halloween and I initially gave this an 8 out of 10 now I said this in my reaction but this movie actually made me a little bit more of a Michael Myers Halloween fan because I wasn't the biggest fan when I watched the first one and the second one but this one was actually it was I felt like a good normal slasher movie rather than the the first two I felt like they just didn't really know what they were trying to do but this one there was a little more at stake it was a little more interesting in my opinion it wasn't majorly boobs mickey I don't think there's any boobs nudity in there which is you know good because it wasn't necessary so why would they have it but this I actually really liked I don't think I'm gonna put it and I have no critiques but I did enjoy this so it is going in almost a new favorite. Okay, I'm so excited because next we have Knives Out. This one, I saw how long this movie was and I was like, oof. I don't know if I'm, I'm ready for that, but I'm actually very glad that I watched this. And again, I watched this because Glass Onion, which is in the Knives Out universe, I guess I should say, came out in December. So I will be watching that. I don't know if I'm gonna do a reaction to that. Let me know if you'd be interested. I kind of want to just watch it, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'll probably do a review about it. I very much enjoyed this one. Talk about your twists and turns. Do you think that you know what's going on. And then I look and we're only halfway through the movie, not even. What more can we acknowledge? I feel like I watched so many Jamie Lee Curtis movies. It's year old. We got The Fog, we got Prom Night, we got Halloween 2 and Halloween 2018. Like, wow. And now Knives Out. We got a lot of Jamie Lee Curtis in here. That is inevitable since she is a scream queen. But Knives Out, it's going in. I have no critiques. I wouldn't want that done any other way. The ending was satisfying. Everything about it. Casting, acting, love, love, love. All right, y'all. Next, we have one that shook me to record. I was putting off reacting to this for so long because I knew it was going to scare me. And that is The Ring. This is the American movie. I think this came out in like 2001 or something. I initially gave this a 6 out of 10. I gave it a 6 out of 10, which if you haven't watched my reaction, and I will ex I explain it why I gave it that rating. I'm gonna say this. I like this because it actually scared the Jesus out of me, which is something that we like to see. You would want that in a horror movie, which is why I feel like six out of 10 is a good rating. However, I feel like the ending just did not scratch an itch for me. I feel like they made the ending the way that they did because they wanted to leave it open for a sequel. And if you're already thinking that while making your movie, you're failing. You you should not do that. You gotta just make the movie as if it's gonna be a standalone. That is the way to go because I feel like this was a lost masterpiece. This could have been something I really liked. I like the setting and I like this concept. However, I just did not like that ending. I'm sorry y'all. Again, 
Just my opinion. Okay, next we have an iconic movie though that I am so glad that I watched and that is The Craft. Ooh, with this iconic cast. Oh my gosh. I originally gave this a nine out of 10. And looking back, I think I have no critiques because this movie is just so, it is so campy. I don't know if that really makes sense. It is so vibey. It is just, uh, it is like that perfect niche and that perfect style of movie that I just look for. And I seek out stuff just like this, where it's girls being girls, I guess. I don't know. They're girls being witches. You know, they got the fashion. They got the hair. They're acting. You know what I mean? Bonnie is just being crazy. I mean, is this everything that I look for in a movie? So I feel like this is perfectly targeted for me. That's why I like it so much. So we can't get offended that I don't like movies that are not targeted towards me, but movies that are targeted towards me and I like, it's it's a good time. I love watching a movie and then knowing while you're watching it, okay, this is gonna be a new favorite of mine. <laughs> All right, y'all, next. <laughs> Continuing on with the Friday the 13th franchise, we have Friday the 13th 4, aka the final chapter. I'm gonna be completely honest, this is not a 10 out of 10 movie, but I do want to put it and I have no critiques, as I really do with the 3D one, just because how goofy it is. Oh my gosh, this one. <laughs> This one was kind of a mess, but in the best way possible. I feel like this movie was the epitome of no plot just vibes because there's so much going on, so many random kills and so many side plots and whatnot. And I understand that I'm always like, oh, there's so much booze to there's so much booze to and like all these movies, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I know that there is that in Friday the 13th, okay? But at least the movie's funny. At least it's a goof. At least it's funny and we got freaking Jason running around killing people. That's the shit I like to see. It's hilarious to me. It would it be crazy if I put this in I have no critiques. I feel like I shouldn't. I won't. It's okay but I kind of do and whatever it's Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and since we're doing that I feel like we ought to put the third one in there too even though the third one was not a favorite of mine actually no but you just put you back where you were i changed my mind just friday the 13th final chapter gets to be there all right merry christmas okay we're almost at the end here folks next we watched edward scissorhands i think this is 1997 or something tim burton i originally gave this a 10 out of 10 Mm hmm Yeah. I feel like I just gotta put it there. If you haven't watched my reaction, I was bawling my eyes out for no good reason at all. This movie was just so much more beautiful than I thought it was gonna be. The story, the innocence of Edward Scissorhands, Winona Ryder, Johnny Depp. You just, it was just so iconic and you just can't ask more from this movie than what it gave you because this movie was just so pleasing and just so beautiful and I can't think about it again too much or talk about it because then I might cry again. All right next we have Silent Night. Deadly Night. I originally gave this an 8 out of 10. Like I said I feel like this kind of falls into the My Bloody Valentine scheme of themes but it just falls into like that style of movie where it is scary and it leans more on it being spooky than any other thing. Barely any humor in there. I mean, there are parts that are kind of funny, but you know what I mean? It's just, it's not trying to be all these different things at once. It's just like, we want to be a scary movie and that's it. So I'm going to put it in almost a new fave because y'all know me. I, there's got to be some sort of humor in there in order for me to like it because I'm a funny gal. Okay, next we watched Better Watch Out from 2016, Daphne Montgomery. I originally gave this an 8 out of 10. People have been describing this as Home Alone, but rated R. And yes, but it's also not really like Home Alone. Like it is like Home Alone, but no one's trying to hurt him. He's trying to hurt everybody else. So it's like opposite Home Alone in that sort of sense. This movie, the way it took a freaking left turn, a hard ass left turn, 
turn is just insane to me. I was not expecting it to go the way that it did. You need to watch my freaking reaction to this because this movie was freaking bonkers. I'm gonna put in almost a new favorite because again, I feel like there was a lot of things that were not answered and someone commented this and I have to agree with them. They said that they really wish they could have seen that kid get his comeuppance. Comeuppance, what is it called? Get his, I don't know. They wanted to see him get punished basically and everyone finding out that he is the villain, whatever. So that would have been awesome to see as well. I, I have to agree. Next is a movie that I just did and that is Gremlins. This movie was so cute. And we already know we have to put it in I have no critiques because it was so cute. Who created that little gremlin design? I need their information immediately. This movie was so precious, so cute. Like I said, it didn't need to be the setting during Christmas time, but I'm so glad that it was because it just made everything so much more cute and the Santa hat, yes, the lights, everything. I'm obsessed, love the story. Corey Feldman, what? Getting paid in the 80s. It was such a cute, good Christmas movie. We'd love to see it. Okay, so you're probably thinking, all right, so we're done here. That was all the things that I did commentary type of video reaction to on my channel this year, and you would be correct. However, I need to acknowledge this and add this to this list because I've not been able to actually put out the video because I've been dealing with copyright for it for so long. Even just to get the video unblocked has been a whole kerfunkle. I watched this back in August and I've not been able to upload it because it's just dealing with this thing for a while. So hopefully I will be able to soon. But this year, just know I watched it this year. I also watched The Lost Boys and I initially gave it an eight out of 10. But looking back, I don't really think I have any critiques because it was such a good movie. It was so campy and it was actually way more funny than I thought it was going to be. The grandpa, the old hoot, you know I love old hoots. Me and old hoots, you know. It was just such a good campy niche vampire movie. This was kind of during the time where I was really into like vampire movies. So it was the perfect thing that I needed. But yes, yes, yes. Lost Boys, I, everyone was iconic in that movie. I don't think I have more to say about it. I, I want you guys to know that I have watched it. I did do a reaction to it. If you want to see it, you can watch it for $1 on my Patreon. I think my dog like hit the remote and turned the TV on. Oh my gosh, the way that that just gave me a heart attack. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh, y'all. At least I would have had the evidence on camera that freaking spooked me out. Anyways, yeah, I just need you guys to know that I have watched this movie and that I did enjoy it. You guys were right. I mean, your recommendations for movies this year have been really freaking good besides whoever recommended VHS and Terrifier and all those other movies that I put on the bottom tiers. <laughs> and I really thought that I was gonna have at least one other movie in that bottom tier, but no, I just, no. <laughs> but yes, Lost Boys was fantastic. Hopefully I'll be able to get that on YouTube soon so you guys can see that. With that said and done, I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my patrons and especially to AJ, Mark Sylvester, and Chase. Thank you so much and make sure to go ahead and check out my Patreon if you haven't already. Okay, thank you guys for coming along with me on this journey. Truly, truly, truly grateful that you guys are here and get to experience me watching these movies for the first time. I love horror movies. I love movies in general, so feel free to recommend just movies in general to me. I am very grateful for this community and for every single one of you that support the channel and watch and like my videos and comment and all that jazz because it really does mean a lot to me and it does help me out. It helps me out in ways you wouldn't even think that it would, but it does. We watched so many great movies this year. Cannot wait to watch more next year. What was your favorite movie of mine that I watched this year? Let me know. Or just what is your favorite movie that you watched this year in general? It could be something new, could be old, whatever. Just let me know. So thank you for coming along with me on this journey. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that jazz. And as always, thanks for watching.
Thank you.